I was inspired to try this after watching PewDiePie's video about learning to draw in 30 days. As many of you know, I suck at art, so it was crazy seeing just how much he improved in such a short time. With this new motivation, I decided it was time for me to sit down and focus on improving my own art skills. But as a game dev, I wanted to improve my 3D modeling skills since that would help my game the most. Luckily, I haven't uploaded in 8 months, so I have plenty of time to fully commit to this. Now, I work full time, so I only have a few hours a night to work on this. So I thought a good goal would be about an hour a day, since it's realistic and achievable. Another thing I need to be realistic about is my art skills, and the fact that I don't have any. So photorealistic models are not going to happen. Instead, I decided a low poly art style would be much more feasible, and I've seen plenty of indie games look great with a low poly art style, so hopefully mine can too. For this challenge, I wanted to break it up into three 10 day sections. Section 1 being tutorial hell, follow tutorials and learn some basic skills. I've done the donut tutorial before, so I'm not a total beginner, but I still need some basic skills. This led me to fall into a rabbit hole of videos, best blender tips, new blender, etc. After wasting hours, I finally decided I would follow Grant Abbott's tutorials for a majority of my first models. His stuff is really good, and he has a low poly playlist I could learn from. This would also help keep my style consistent. Alright, time to actually do some modeling. For the first day, I made a barrel, because I thought it would be an easy place to start, and I think I did a pretty good job. Overconfident already. And since it wasn't too hard, I also made a simple rock. For day two, I made a sword. This taught me how to use a reference image, as well as the mirror modifier, allowing me to edit all sides at once. This is a very helpful tool. Grant's tutorial also had the sword put into a rock, so I made another rock real quick and shoved my sword into it. On day three, I didn't make anything. I was busy. Okay, I'm not perfect, but I'm not giving up yet. It'll just be a 31 day challenge. Day three, for real this time. I made some trees. I think they turned out okay, but they're definitely not as good as his. For day 4, I tried making a giraffe using a reference image. Look at these tiny legs. In the end, I apparently don't know what a giraffe looks like. First model I'm just not happy with. So I made a rock to feel better. Day 5, I made this metal structure thing. It was cool to see how to make some complex shapes. And I also made this rock. Day 6, I made a chest. But this isn't some ordinary chest, it also opens. And I had some extra time today, so you guessed it, I made a fence. On day 7, I made a stone wall with a bridge. Lots of the array tool in this one. It looks good, but you can see how repetitive it is. Now day 8 was one of my favorite days. I made a well, which I thought would be crazy hard, but then I learned about the bend tool. This made it so easy. After the base was done, I had to build the frame alone since the tutorial skipped this part, but I think I did okay. Then I just added some more details, and I think this turned out pretty... well. Yeah, I know that's the comedy you guys come for. Anyways, I might just throw this model right into my game. On day 9, I made this cottage, but I didn't have enough time to finish it. Obviously. So I used day 10 to finish adding some details. Definitely could still do more, but I think this turned out pretty good. And now that I finished day 10, it's time to stop using tutorials, since tutorials make this relatively easy. Unless you're a frickin' giraffe. So for the next 10 days, I wanted to use references. Basically, see if I can copy a model on my own. So for day 11, I wanted to make this lifeguard stand from the thumbnail of a Blender video I watched. And I was pretty impressed with myself. My color theory could definitely use some work, but I can fix that later. On day 12, I attempted to make Shrek's outhouse, which looked okay, until I added color, then it just looked flat. So since I was disheartened for day 13, I just made Minecraft Steve. Okay, I actually made this so I could learn how to texture objects. As you can see, I manually mapped out every face, and since this model was so easy, I think it's an A+. Just don't look at the watermarks. On day 14, I wanted to make a town hall from Clash of Clans. Now there are plenty to choose from. But I decided to go with the Town Hall 5, because it wasn't super complicated, but it's still more than just a box with a roof. I think the model turned out great, but again, adding color ruins it for me. As you can tell, the real Town Hall 5 has varying colors and patterns throughout, and mine just looks flat. So for day 15, 
I learned a few more texturing methods to add some noise to the colors. This makes it look way better, and I tried it on Shrek's place too, and it definitely improved it. However, I still thought I could do more. Looking back at my well in the cottage, the colors are plain, but they work because of the added details, like the stones and the shingles. So I went back and added a few details to the town hall, and it looks closer. Still not totally happy, but at least I can tell my modeling skills are way above where I started, and I'm only halfway into this thing. But there was still plenty to learn. So for day 16, I tried learning how to hand paint textures, and this was probably my worst day. All I got out of it was this plank that looked like a child with crowns got a hold of it. I told y'all art wasn't my thing. So instead of getting hung up on that for the next 15 days, I decided to move on and try modeling some more. For day 17, I didn't have a ton of time, so I made a quick pokeball. But Phil, isn't that just a ball? Well yeah, but this wasn't a throwaway day like some of you are thinking. I had to learn about the boolean tool so I could cut a circle into the sphere to make this indent. I thought this was super cool. However, the next day started rough. I wanted to take on Mario. Not even Mario himself, just a Koopa or a Goomba. And this is when I realized almost everything I had made this far was roughly square, and these were going to be round. The only other round thing I had made was a giraffe, and we know how that went. So instead of growing as a person, I just made a lighthouse. Obviously my water isn't as good, but I think the rest holds up. Day 19 is when I tried making a model that wasn't a basic square. I decided to make Hollow Knight, since I like his design and it's not too complicated. I got the basic shape done, and from the front he looks good, but from other angles he's looking a little thick. But hopefully most of that will get covered up when I make his cape. Speaking of the cape, I was unsure how I was going to do this, but I just subdivided a plane and dragged it around until I liked it. Then I got it smoothed out and it looks way better than I was expecting. Am I learning? I used the boolean modifier again to make his eye holes, and I really like this one. Hey, no turning it. Okay, moving on. With day 20 being my last day of stealing, I wanted to really push myself, so I decided to make Shovel Knight. This one took a bit longer than an hour. Please don't ask me how long. Luckily, it was Saturday, so I had some extra time. I started with the helmet because I figured that would be the most important part. I got it looking pretty good. Still a little square, but hey, it's close. I continued to make the rest of his body, and his trusty shovel. And besides missing his arms, I think this is great. There are definitely some bad angles, but don't worry about that. And after struggling for a while, I finally got his arms to an okay place. I didn't know how to make his hand, so I got him looking like Squidward. The biggest problem I had with this model is I couldn't find any artwork of his back, so I had to improvise. You guys can judge if I captured his form correctly. And just like that, day 20 is done. And now for the final 10 days, I'm going to make models for my game. For those of you who don't know, I'm making a survival game where you play as a robot protecting a boy from all the other corrupted robots. See, you can tell this one is evil because of the eyebrows. Okay, clearly these models need some improvement. So I created a list of all the models I needed and got to work. For the first day, I wanted to keep it simple and use what I had learned. So I started with making a bucket. This was basically just a barrel with the top pulled down more. Wait, why didn't I just do that? Anyways, one down, many to go. Since this was pretty quick, I had time to also make a chest. I didn't want to make a treasure chest like I had earlier. Instead, I opted for more of a storage chest. Of course, I still want the top to open. However, I felt like something was off. So I added little indents to make it look like multiple pieces of wood. And I think this looks much better. Could use a little cleanup, but I think we can all agree this is way better than my original chest. For day 22, I took on the fence and the gate. For the fence, I had the problem where in my game you can connect fences so they have to go together. This makes a lot of designs I saw impossible. But my final design turned out pretty good, and they stack pretty well. The corners are a bit weird, but I can fix that later. Another problem that came with repeating fences is that they look very repetitive. To fix this, I randomized the bars in the middle to each change between 7 different options. This means the fence has 49 different looks, so hopefully it doesn't look too repetitive. I actually threw this one into my game to see how it fits, and oh my, it is way better than my last fence. Now onto the gate. I just took the fence and added a gap in the middle and some hinges on the side so it can swing open. I changed the design a few times and ended up with this. Let me know what you guys think. 
For day 23, I moved on to the carrot. Right now, my carrot is an orange box with a green box on top of it. So really anything I did would be better, and I think this one is. I also made a model for when the carrot is not done growing yet. It'll be lower to the ground and smaller. This lets the crop have stages you can see it going through. But what's the point if you can't plant it at anything? So I made the planter. My original model wasn't actually that bad, but could use some updates. So I added some variants around it to make it look less perfect, and I also updated the dirt part to not only look like dirt, thanks to the texturing methods I learned, but also added four indents to show where you can plant things. And they'll fill in when something is planted. And these dirt spots are all independent, so you can do each one individually. It might be a little hard to see right now, but I can change the color later if necessary. Feeling confident for day 24, I tackled the sprinkler. I just used a real life reference, and I think it turned out pretty good. I also made a bag to hold seeds, which basically just turned out like the bell bag from Animal Crossing. And to finish out the day, I made a new wrench. Yep, it's a wrench, what more do you want me to say? Day 25. I wanted to make the axe and the pickaxe. However, I don't want them to look like real tools. I want them to look like you took wood and scrap metal and smashed them together, since that's what you're doing in the game. So that's what I did, and I used a wire to hold it in place. I think the axe looks really good, and the pick looks okay. But either way, it's a huge upgrade from what I had. Now, day 26 is where things started getting a little tougher. I only had the difficult models left, so I started struggling with the house, and finally got a shape I didn't hate, but I needed way more detail. I tried a few things, but I eventually just needed a break. So for day 27, I made the windmill that powers your house. Before, the windmill was as basic of a model as any. I added some more details, and overall, it looks great. Again, colors are my enemy, but we can tweak those whenever. And now that I've had some time to reset, I took another shot at the house for day 28. I added bricks, a chimney, windows, a door that's boarded up to protect the boy inside. Definitely not because I didn't want to make the inside. I also added a mailbox slash book return thing to transfer food inside. This opens like you'd expect and replaces the mailbox I had from the original home. I'm not totally happy with this yet, but the side by side really shows how far it's come. But now that I've been humbled a little, I thought what better time than now to make a whole new enemy. And of course, that did not go well. So on day 29, I ended up just updating my original enemy. I made two versions, one that was the perfect version, and the other has dinks and dents. This gives it more personality and fits the setting better. But let me know what you guys prefer. Either way, it looks better. And failing that other enemy model taught me to keep it simple. It's low poly, so keep it that way. So for the final day, I was ready to take on remaking the main character. But I got frustrated with the design. So I switched to making the Scarecrow. Now, you might just see the enemy's head on a stick, which might scare them, but if that doesn't work, this gun should do the trick. The idea is when an enemy gets close, the screen rolls back and the gun extends out, creating a nice base defense. But this is pretty basic still, so I added some wires and variation to make it look more unique. Then I tackled the body. This went through many iterations, but besides the checkerboard, I'm pretty happy with it. It is a round object, so I struggled a bit more with it but I was pretty excited with how the straw turned out. I used the same texturing method, just with the wave function. Like I said, the checkerboard could use some touches, but I think it all came together nicely. It took longer than I want to admit to get this far. I might have cheated and used an extra day or two, but just so I end on a high note, I made another rock. Overall, I'm counting these 30 days as a win, minus the giraffe. I feel like I really improved all my models and it wasn't even close. I was surprised with just how much I could learn in 30 days. Of course, my next video will be me actually adding these to my game, so if you want to see how that goes, subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys then, and I promise it won't be 8 months.